Am I the asshole for refusing to tell my fiancé that her outfit made my brother and his wife uncomfortable? I, 34 male, am getting married to Marcy, 32 female, in about a month. My brother Eric, 36 male, has two kids with his wife Wendy, 33 female. Fake names. Marcy's a high school teacher, this is relevant. When I first met Marcy, she was very conservative. Her family originates from Egypt. She's third generation American, but her family came from an area where it's not acceptable to show anything provocative. Marcy told me that she wanted to dress sexy for once. I didn't mind. I like her the way she is and how she dresses, but it's her body so do as you want. So Marcy and her friend Anne went out shopping. We went out for dinner last night with Eric and Wendy. She decided she wanted to wear one of the outfits Anne had helped her pick out. It was a fitted long-sleeve white hooded shirt that was very low-cut like you could see the strap of her bra. Laces crisscrossed the chest, and the bra was black in contrast to tie it together. Marcy is very busty, she's 5 feet 3 in a DD. So obviously, my eye was drawn to that area. I thought it was very attractive and told her she should wear it. She wore it with jeans and boots. On the way there, Marcy was talking about how nice she felt and was giddy that she was wearing something her family traditionally wouldn't have let her. Dinner with Eric and Wendy went well. It wasn't upscale but not cheap. The average meal was maybe $20 $25, so we were all dressed appropriately for this place. The dinner was fine, nothing eventful happened, but when we got home, Eric messaged me and said I should tell Marcy that her outfit was inappropriate and that I shouldn't let her leave the house like that. I called him, and he told me that Wendy was uncomfortable sitting across from Marcy and couldn't enjoy her meal with big boobs in her face. Eric agreed with her. He said it was awkward that they could see her cleavage and he even said it was hard to concentrate because of her shirt. I said I didn't have a problem with how she dressed. I said Marcy looked nice in her shirt and that this was the first time she tried dressing out of her comfort zone. Eric said it was weird that they were just resting on the table for everyone to see. I told him Marcy is short and can't help where the table hits. I said it sounded more like Wendy caught him staring at my fiancé and was either jealous of Marcy or angry at him but neither means Marcy has to change how she dresses. He then called me a few names, stated that, I would be concerned about how I looked if I worked in a school system but whatever, good night, and hung up. Marcy, as far as I know, has no idea this exchange happened. She was so excited to go shopping for different clothes after work today and has already sent me a couple of pictures of things she likes on Amazon asking if I think she'd look good in them. So am I the asshole for not telling Marcy to change and telling her the shirt was inappropriate? I didn't think it was. I thought she looked nice but I want to know. Not the asshole, my dude you're really the opposite of an asshole. Your brother and his wife don't get to dictate what your wife wears. Hell, neither do you but it sounds like you understand that. Honestly, your brother and his wife are the assholes. Not the asshole. No matter what top she's going to wear, she's still going to have the same breasts. Not the asshole honestly, it doesn't sound like that revealing of an outfit lol. Oh no evil bra straps they turn me into cartoon wolf yeah fuck off. Also as a partner to an educator, I fucking hate the, if you're a teacher you're basically a nun, thing that the US enforces socially. It's so weird. Not the asshole your brother is most definitely the asshole here. Your wife can dress however she likes, and the straight audacity of him saying you shouldn't, let her leave the house like this, is insane. She's not your belonging. You don't hurt to, let her, do anything. You're a good guy for supporting your wife as a good partner should. NTA wait till er brother and his wife find out all women have tits. Not the asshole. If seeing cleavage is a bridge too far for your brother, he needs to join a monastery. Outside of a male-only environment there will be boobs. Not the asshole. And from a female perspective, I applaud you for being a decent man who loves his fiancée for who she is, respects her and stands up for her when someone is throwing sexist, Negative comments towards her hands clapping hands clapping hands clapping you nor your fiancé are responsible for their thoughts. That's their responsibility. You and your fiancé definitely don't have to put up with their toxicity. On a more positive note, congrats to the happily engaged couple. It sounds like you both have a great foundation to build a life of love, happiness and years of incredible experiences heart. Not the asshole. You are an awesome supportive partner to your fiancé. Your brother and his wife need to get over themselves. Am I the asshole for going to my divorce court date? We got a new manager at our workplace in the, the six months since she's been there we have had the highest turnover at our company. 
Previously it was maybe two people a year would find better jobs or quit. This includes all of 2020 and most of 2021. She keeps saying, no one wants to work, but she creates such a toxic work by micromanagement everything. From how she likes papers stapled to what color of pens and highlighters she likes. Last week three employees quit for the above reasons because our manager went on a rant about staple placements, pens color and highlighters. Three months ago I put in for this court date for my divorce. It's this week and my manager has told me I can't go because now we are short staffed. I'm not even entertaining the idea of not going but my manager is saying if I go she can't get this project done on time and everyone keeps quitting on her and I have to stay or come in later that day. I'm already emotionally drained from a shitty divorce anyways and I don't feel like coming in at all the same day. My manager insists it's not an all-day thing and for me to pop in at the courthouse and get done what I need to and tell the judge to postpone everything else because there's an emergency at work. My brain trying to comprehend this shut down and I honestly think I died instead from her saying that to me. I point blank said I'm not coming into work that day. I'm thinking of taking an FMLA leave at this point to avoid a complete mental breakdown combined from my divorce and my insane manager. Sounds like your manager can't afford to fire you. Go to your court date. Ignore your manager. This is bigger than, IATA. This isn't just toxic, but potentially illegal based on a number of factors, state, country, industry. My next stop would be HR to get some clarification on rights and expectations. Not the asshole for sake of the subreddit. Not the asshole you put the time in three months ago. It's not your problem she is short-staffed. I also doubt she can do anything considering what would happen if you quit. Is there a manager above her or someone you can complain to about her behavior? You do not have to take those kind of working conditions. Not the asshole. Pretty sure it's illegal for an employer to not give you time off for a court date anyways. Of course you're not the asshole. Being micromanaged sucks. I took a 7% pay cut a few years back to get away from a micromanager and it was worth every penny. Turnover at that place went from one person a year, almost always a retirement, to around 20% per year, about 10 people a year in an office of 50. But understand that taking the day off will not go well with your manager, not that it sounds like anything could, so I'd also be looking for a way out of there as well. Start job hunting and don't look back once you can turn in your two weeks notice. Not the asshole. Not even sure why you're bothering to ask it's so obvious. You know exactly why this crazy lady is short-staffed. You shouldn't be surprised that her crazy has extended to trying to deny you time off. Put in for you FMLA. Go to court with your phone turned off. Brush off your resume. And if they're competent, let your manager's manager know the shenanigans the crazy lady is pulling to alienate everybody. Yes, please do put in for FMLA. I'm not a huge proponent due to people who abuse mental health days. So when I think you should, that's really saying something. Dot. I wish I'd have done it in 2020 when I got put with a terrible manager I had to take anxiety meds and get therapy just to be able to not go nuclear on him. But I really should have taken the time off and not put myself through that type of mental abuse. It took a big toll on my physical health as well. Please do what you gotta do, and best of luck to you. Not the asshole this is HR level bullshit. Am I the asshole for giving my daughter a stuffed bear filled with human hair? My, 33M, wife, 31F, and I just had our daughter, our first child, three months ago. My family has a tradition where the firstborn will get a special stuffed animal. I got one from my mother when I was born, who got one from her mother, who got one from her father, and so on and so on. The reason that it's special is because the stuffing is made from their parents' hair. The way it works is that once a child is old enough to start getting their hair cut, their parent will save as much of that hair as they can. When the child becomes a parent themselves, the new grandparent will use the saved hair to make a stuffed animal to give to the baby. The hair in the toy represents the new parent's connection to the child and is a tangible measure that shows that they'll always be close by. The care taken by the new grandparent in collecting the hair and using it to make the toy represents the child's connection to its family history and is a tangible measure that shows the extended family will always support them. In short, the stuffed animal is a way of connecting the new life to their new family. After my daughter was born, my mother spent a lot of time making a stuffed bear from scratch to fill with my childhood hair. She just finished last week. Since my leave from work is just about over, I was excited to give my daughter the bear and share the tradition with my wife. I thought she would think it was sweet, but she blew up at me. Instead of liking the bear, 
My wife said it was gross and disgusting and that she wouldn't have it around her daughter. I told her that it's our daughter, not hers, and that there's nothing disgusting about my family's tradition. She said it was unhygienic. I told her that it's not, the hair is clean and well preserved. We argued, and eventually she said that if I ever put that thing near her daughter, that she would throw it in the trash. I was shocked. This is something that represents decades of my mother's work and planning and generations of my family's history. I told my wife that if she's so cruel and callous about something that means so much to me and my family, then she's not the person I thought she was. She just called my family's tradition, weird and culty. I didn't know what to do. I didn't think my wife was this kind of person. I told my mother about the fight, and now she's feuding with my wife too. My wife then got her family involved before calling me some vulgar names, but am I really in a hole for wanting to give my special girl her special bear? Nah. Because I understand this is emotionally meaningful to you, but it's also, fairly objectively, pretty fucking weird. Esh. You can't surprise your partner with family traditions. Especially one where you give a baby a wad of dead hair. No assholes here I think the tradition itself is both sweet and gross at the same time. But I can definitely understand your wife being grossed out by your weird traditional voodoo doll. Not the asshole. I do think you should have let your wife know about the tradition beforehand though, to save this sort of argument. But I do think the aggression and name calling is unnecessary, it's not unhygienic just unusual. In Nazi death camps the hair of victims was shorn, often after death by gassing, to be used as stuffing for mattresses, pillows and other uses and yes, also for hair on and in dolls. For me personally, knowing that history, I too would be creeped out by the doll, no matter how well intentioned it was. Nah, but definitely a culture clash that probably should have been discussed prior to the gifting. Not the asshole but I feel like you should have told your wife about this tradition a long time ago. You are the asshole. Your wife kind of sucks for judging your family tradition. But it's not her fault that you're suddenly springing this on her. You are the asshole for not bringing it up before you had a child together. If it's so important to you and you plan to continue the tradition, you kind of owe it to your wife to have brought it up before now when there's a bear stuffed with human hair or whatever. Sure, it's just hair and it could be clean and well preserved. But it could have been stuffed with toenail clippings, or scabs, or baby teeth, and it wouldn't make it any more or less weird to someone who has never heard of this. Info. What culture is this that it's a family tradition? Why didn't you discuss it before if it's so special for you to give your special girl this special bear? Info. Has this really not come up beforehand? Am I the asshole for paying off my EXS debt when I have a new boyfriend? I, 27 female, have been dating my current boyfriend for 7 months. I dated my ex about 3 years ago for 9 years. Things didn't end off on bad terms I just realized that we weren't a good pair and never really had fun or anything anymore. But, for a majority of our relationship he was paying everything while I went to college and the consensus was that I would pay for us once I landed a job. Well when we broke up, I moved out but I knew he was still in debt so I felt bad. I've been saving a good amount of money because my job pays well and I finally reached out to my ex asking how much debt he was in altogether. He told me about $13,000, with proof, so I sent him $18,000, I sent an extra $5,000 for taking care of me and etc. Well I told my boyfriend about it and he was very upset, saying I obviously still love my ex, and etc. Which is very much not true. Everyone I talk to is split. Now my boyfriend is very upset and giving my the cold shoulder. So am I the asshole? Not the asshole. Your boyfriend of 7 months has no say in how you spend your money. You're a decent person fulfilling your promises to someone who was a part of your life for a long time. Your boyfriend has shown you that he wouldn't be. Do with that information what you will. Not the asshole. The opposite. You made a financial plan with your ex-boyfriend and you honored that plan even though you broke up. Most people would unfortunately screw their previous partner over in a situation like this but you didn't. Be proud of yourself. I did the same with my ex. Gave her $15,000 to help pay off my half of the debt we accumulated together, on her credit cards, after I had already been dating my now fiancé. My fiancé wasn't too happy about it, but same as done as divorces debt is assigned half to each. The way I see it, my past is my past and how I want to end things with that person, with my finances, is my business. Sure, I still care about my ex, I always will, but that doesn't mean I want to be with her. Your now boyfriend will need to grow up and accept that about you. Not the asshole. 
You're a very very good person. Loyal and generous. If boyfriend doesn't see that you may have different life philosophies. Not the asshole. Your boyfriend of 7 months thinks he has a say in what you do with your money. Child please. Your money, your obligations, your choice. 100% not the asshole. Not the asshole, there's big difference between gratitude and wanting to go back with your ex. Not the asshole, thanks for being a decent person. Not the asshole. You borrowed money from someone on the understanding you would pay them back later. How could it be bad to then pay them back? You did the right thing. And good for him for not chasing you and asking for money when it would have been reasonable for him to at least ask if you could help. 